Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick. If you are new here, welcome. If you are not new here, welcome back. Today we are getting back into another entry of Nick's favorites. Technically, last week was also an entry, but I <laughs> low-key forgot to throw up the image. All right, so the time has finally come. We are concluding my holy trinity of Halloween movies. So people have been asking, when are you gonna watch the movie? When are you gonna watch the movie? When are you gonna watch the movie? And I'm like, it's coming soon. I wanted to wait until October and we're finally in October. So today we are getting into 1998. Halloween H2O 20 years later. As we've established with the first movie, the original movie from 1978, my three favorite entries in this franchise is the original Halloween 2 from 1981 and Halloween H2O from 1998. This is my favorite uh, timeline. There is just something about what happens in this movie. Lori finally standing up against Michael in a way that is just so cathartic. I'm getting horny. Mm. I'm getting horny. So this this film actually has another special memory for me because this is the first Halloween film that I ever saw in theaters. Like I, I remember it clear as day. Like I remember uh, in the opening scene, the first time you actually see Michael, I remember somebody in the theater screaming her head off. It was, uh, ugh, it was such a fond memory that I have and it's, I don't know. This yeah, this movie is so fucking good, y'all. Before we get into this, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification button so that you can get notifications for whenever I upload a new video. You can also check me out on social media. I have both Instagram and I have Twitter. And you can check out my Patreon. You'll get access to Patreon exclusive full length reactions, full length audio commentaries, polls to help me pick what I watch next, and more cool stuff. So. It is October, y'all. It is October. This is my favorite month. This is my favorite season. We are about to get into one of my favorite movies. I, ooh, wait, look, and I got coffee and it's pumpkin flavored because I'm basic. <laughs> Let's get into Halloween H2O. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I haven't visited these houses yet. I want to figure out where these are and visit them as well. Because I've got all the locations from the original. Queen Marion. Y'all, and she, she fights for her life in this opening scene. This was such a great scene for her. The Halloween Kills notwithstanding. We don't, we don't talk about, <laughs> we don't talk about what they did to her in Halloween Kills. Because it wasn't right. That's right. See, she's smart too. She didn't go in. She got w one whiff that somebody was potentially even in her house still. And she was like, nope, we're not doing this. Oh. Hey. Oh. hey. He is such a little baby here. No, no shit. shit. No, no shit. shit. <laughs> Hasn't anyone told you? Secondhand smoke kills. Yeah, yeah but, but they're, they're all, all dead. dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Expect more of this, because y'all, this movie. Academy Award. Jimmy, where are you going? Check out your house. No, wait for the police. Where's the fun in that, huh? Uh, huge balls. The biggest balls. Like dragging on the floor balls to be able to go into that house on your own volition. No, no, no. Yes, and also I am fully aware. In case you are not aware, John Ottman did the score originally for this movie, and then last minute they were like, uh, it doesn't really fit the vibe of the movie. So there's some pieces from his original score that is still played within the, mo the movie, but they took pieces of Marco Beltrami's score for Scream, Scream 2, and Mimic, which it fits really well, so I'm not gonna complain about it. Suspended five times this year already for, for getting, getting a little crazy, crazy with, with the stick, all right? right. <laughs> I need help. I have always wanted one of those things. Well, I don't have like a center island thing, but you know, like if I did, like one of those things where the, the pots and pans hang off of it, but I could never actually have that because I would literally wake up in the middle of the night and my cat would be like I'm pulling a Tarzan and just swinging from it. A few moments later. I checked all the rooms and all the closets. They uh, they did a real number on your office. Oh, and uh, also they messed up your kitchen really bad too. Lying ass bitch. Oh, Dr. Loomis. I'ma just scoot on over and let you whack him. Get him again. Get him for me. Forever an icon.
I don't know why you would have kept that information in your house in the first place, especially if he thought that Michael was still alive out there. This is so good. This is so good. That is scary as shit. Mm -mm -mm. You in danger, girl. See, that's what I love about this one. Cause like Michael, he stays creepy as shit in this one. He's stalking people, sticking to the shadows. Not every single time he's on screen, it's not like a constant display of strength. He has some of those for sure, <laughs> but. Jimmy. <laughs> Yeah, Jimmy got wrecked. <laughs> he looks so good right there, though. This is like one of like the 37 masks that they use in this movie. I believe this one is the Halloween 6 mask. Oh, f him up. Oh, I like the shot. That big ass knife. Y'all remember how big his knife was in the original? <laughs> it was like that long. And God damn it! Ay, ay, ay. You know, the weird thing about that is on like the DVD, when you watch this movie and you have the subtitles on during that scene, the subtitles don't say what she actually says. The subtitles, if I remember correctly, say like, Andy, he's not dead. So I don't, I don't know if that was like from an original shooting script, something that they deleted out of there, but I always thought that that was weird. Spent his life tracking down that Halloween guy who butchered all those kids up in Haddonfield, right? Michael Myers. Hey, you know the thing for Michael Myers. I never found his body. Yeah, that was like 20 years ago. That don't mean shit when it comes to Michael. He likes to uh, lay in wait. You never know the rhyme or reasoning behind why he does what he does. Loomis was obsessed with Michael Myers. This is quite a love fest. I'll call up to head and feel more. This is literally what my bedroom looked like <laughs> growing up. I think I said this before. I literally had manila file folders with fake newspaper clippings cut out from the Halloween franchise. Loser! Like I thought I, thought I lived in fucking Haddonfield. Y'all, but this, the, the, the score, like the, the main theme for this movie. What was that? So good. Ah, so good. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a real big fan of this movie. I'm shocked. This is shocking news. Class of 78, did they let her graduate early? Because October 1978 is when the original thing happened. And you don't graduate or like end your year until the next season. Well, summer. So she should have been class of 1979, unless they let her graduate early, which, you know, seems like something that they would allow her to do given what she went through. Trauma. For those with a good eye, the school from Halloween H2O is also the mansion from Scream 3. And it is awesome in person. I got to go in there when they, they didn't have it open. They were, I don't know, they were like doing an auction and I was like, I would like to buy things. And so I went in there just so that I could walk around inside. <laughs> and she seems like she's going through it. So like that, the, the little uh, security station that LL Cool J's character is in, like that's not even actually there. That was built for this movie. Making toast. None for me, thanks. Caffeine is not a food group. We're out of Percodan. What the hell is Percodan? What is that? Today is the day that you're gonna realize your overprotection and paranoia is inhibiting my growth process. You wanna go camping? I'll take you camping. I don't wanna go with you. I would go with you, Jamie Lee. Also, Jamie Lee Curtis looks absolutely fabulous with short hair. Well, Dad is an abusive, chain-smoking, methadone addict. And just think, he left you. <sighs> Ooh, right upside the head, right upside the head. What's wrong with you? I'm gonna teach you nothing. You're becoming an Oedipal enabler, you know that? 20 years from now, you're still gonna be living with her. Probably running some weird motel so out in the middle of nowhere. Yosemite? I love the, like, the never-ending references to Psycho in this movie. Especially, you know, with who is in this movie? Mm. Fabulous. I've always thought it was funny when they'll change like the costume or the look for whatever the villain is and like characters when they like think of whatever the, the villain looks like they see them in the new mask or outfit or whatever they're wearing like she whatever this hallucination that she just had of him he's wearing the mask well one of the masks from this movie despite the fact like the only time that she's ever seen him wearing one of the masks was back in 1978 which we literally just saw in her dream wearing the original mask. I don't get it. Okay. See, I told you we'd make it. When I was a little girl, I used to paint 
woods. Like as your primary place to urinate? Y'all didn't have a toilet? Uh, don't worry. Mom, that's the boys' room. The, the boys, boys are just gonna have to deal with it. it. Also, there's nobody around. I would have gotten right outside of the car and just peed. Ma? It's, it's just, just the, the door, door, Casey. Casey Becker. <gasps> No, no. I would have been screaming. <laughs> Look at the way he's just looking at- Oh, that is so f***ing creepy. This is one of my favorite scenes. Uh. I would have tossed her ass right to Michael and then like, take her with you. So, what's the plan? Romantic dinner, candlelight, soft music, animal sex. You need a hormone suppressant. <laughs> Also, he will forever be the kid from Jumanji. Forever. Morning, Norma. The mail and messages are on your desk, along with the new quarter. Oh, Miss Janet Lee. For those who do not know, that is Jamie Lee Curtis's mother, Janet Lee, who also was the iconic beauty that was murderlated in the shower in the original Psycho. You are, without a doubt, the most amazing woman I have ever met. And what's wrong now? Probably the fact that you're eating her f***ing face. <laughs> like, look at that. Like, ew, get off. With her long, slender legs, they climbed high, high up, up her skirt, skirt leading, leading to, to two tumultuous, round, melon breasts. Round melon, what? <laughs> you accidentally press the gate. And when you have your back turned, we sneak out. Don't you do me wrong, okay? Get Come out of here. Right. Get out of here. Comb your hair. And he makes a good point, because the real villain of this movie is whoever the f cut Josh Hartnett's hair. I'm actually going to say what everyone else is thinking, because it's the truth. Oh, Jesus, Whoa. Will. I thought you saw me. You see me now? What if she was like, no, I've gone blind. <laughs> I think I'm losing John. I think he's finally tired of my bullshit. How about you? Tired of my bullshit. I'm a counselor. I'm attracted to it. That guy's fucking weird. Ooh. He does a lot of things in this movie where he thinks he's being like cute and sexy and N no, you're not. I'm attracted to you because of your trauma. Ew, no. There's a little backstory that I haven't been completely successful with. I've tried everything. 12 steps, self-help, group therapy, shrinks. I don't think that's everything, sis. Have you tried, like, medication? Can I get another glass of Chardonnay, please? Today. <laughs> this booze hound. Look at her, look at her, look, look. She's barely f***ing taking a breath. Oh my god. Then in here, two shots of vodka. But I will say, this movie, in my opinion, is a much more realistic and believable portrayal of where that character would be, like, mental health-wise, based on everything that happened to her. Come on, I'll drive you back. You know what? Charlie, here. Go get in the car. I'll be right there. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Well, I'm really uncomfortable with you saying that. Well, well then don't, don't put me in the, the position, position, John. <laughs> That's it. That's enough. I can't take it, Mom. He's dead. Michael Myers is dead. Mm, not so much. Michael Myers ain't dead until that box office is dead, if you know what I mean. <laughs> not this functional alcoholic getting behind the wheel of a car after she just chugged two giant glasses of wine that we saw who knows how many she actually ordered. Also, of course, I have to, you know, give some love to Michelle Williams and her super 90s thin brows. And I also have to point out, like, from a script standpoint, from, like, the setting, this is really cool. A, a private secluded school in a, in a different state. Like, thank God we're finally out of Haddonfield. Move on. I love Haddonfield, but I don't like to be constantly tied to a specific location. <laughs> he would have been murdered. He would have been killed right then and there. I've never celebrated Halloween before. We've got a psychotic serial killer in the family who loves to butcher people on Halloween, and I just thought it in bad taste. Well, I don't think you had much of a choice <laughs> in celebrating it, so. Guys, it's Frankenstein. We could have watched the movie. Solid callback to the original. 
Well, I, th I think that Victor should have confronted the monster sooner. I mean, he's completely responsible for Elizabeth's death. He was, he was so paralyzed by fear that he never did anything. I want to point this out. This is one of my favorite parts of the movie because I love the, the, the metaphor, like uh, the similarity of what she's talking about with Frankenstein and Victor, because it's obviously, you know, a reference in a way uh, referring to what's going on with Lori and with Michael. But in hindsight, you know, by the time the movie ends, it does make you wonder, like, this was crucial in regards to Lori's sort of strength that she's able to find by the end of the movie with going back to confront Michael. So thank you to Molly in this movie for saying this to her and kind of cluing her in after 20 years of what, you know, her fate, what she has to do. Also, it's a good callback to the original because they were also talking about fate in the original film. It's beautiful. This girl is deep. Victor had reached a point in his life where he had nothing left to lose. And the monster saw to that by killing off everybody that he loved. Victor finally had to face it. It was his fate. See that look of realization on her face? Oh, such a good scene. You sure? Yes. Look, it's good for you. So just call me. Call, call and call, call and call. <laughs> you feel like you've called too many times. Call once more. This scene like kind of breaks my heart a little bit though. Because she's finally like releasing the restraints that she has on him. And then he acts like a little dick. It's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare. I've had, I've had my, my share. share. <laughs> <laughs> Love that line. Also, the, the everybody's entitled to one good scare. That's a good callback to the original, and it was done way better. Unlike, never mind. We're, I'm, I'm not gonna spend. Would you shut the fuck up? I know it's not my place. If I could be maternal for a moment. Maternal. This was such a beautiful scene. This was. Oh. Oh my God. Mm. This right here, this right here. Oh my gosh. So you got the actress from Psycho, you got the car from Psycho, and they mixed into the score, the theme from Psycho. Oh my God. Such an iconic scene. Oh shit, honey, someone's here. Can I call you back? Oh no, 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 I hold on. I wanna know what stupid line Tanya falls for. The, the same, same one you did. did. This movie makes me so happy. <laughs> The bravery. The second that I would have seen that there was nobody in the car, I would not have opened the fucking gates. Hey, Queen. Yeah, see, I like that. This one just feels a little bit more in line with the first film in, in how Michael behaves in the later sequels. He would have like ripped LL apart. Now I'm gonna pass on that one. Hey. Wait, 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 what's going on, baby? I don't know. But like this? I like when Michael is playful, when he's like pranking people, like he wants to scare you. That was like the whole thing in the original with him following Lori and like making sure that Lori saw him because he wanted to f with her. He wanted to scare her. Oh, this is, look, look how creepy this is. Keeping him in the shadows. No! I keep scaring you today. After the first time. What are you doing? I'm making the rounds, but I was hoping I would have the honor of spending the evening with you tonight. He's so fucking horny. Literally, all he wants to do is smash. He wants to put the candy in her corn. Do you want to die tonight? Yes, just another reason to fucking love this movie. Because McQueen, McQueen is in it. Like, and not just the queen, like Scream 2, the best Scream film. It's just, it's just everything, everything. I'm so used to giving. And now I get to receive. What are you two up to tonight? Well, we thought we'd hit the town, pick up some guys, you know, drop some roofies in their drinks, have a whole date rape evening. Huh, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Questionable. Very questionable. <laughs> Ugh, I could just like, I could take, like I could sense the taste of the straight vodka. What? I thought we'd do this right. No, he just wants to carve her pumpkin. Taste it, love it, or it's free. Oh, the buffet has arrived. They were just like staring at each other. I can't do that. I can't, I was, I've never been able to do that. Just somebody's like standing there and just staring at me, gazing longingly into my- so You can back up a little bit. Stop staring at me. My name's not Carrie Tate. What is it? Lori Strode. I changed my name when I went into hiding. Like the witness protection program. Look, he said, I I'm a really good listener as he's trying to like devour her nipples. What happened to the sister? She died, right? No, she faked her death. 
And now she's the headmistress of a very posh, secluded private school in Northern California. Right, you did the right thing, Seth, because let's be realistic. Had you stayed in Haddonfield, your ass probably would have been on the chopping block long before now. You would have been dead, six feet under, beneath toe. He sat in a sanitarium for 15 years waiting for me. One rainy night, he decides to go trick-or-treating. How old were you? 17. That is, uh, I want to call this out. Please, just give us a break. Lori's 17 years old. John turns 17. And that is when Michael chooses to return. There's something with the number 17. There's comic books that were like official canon comic books that kind of dive a little bit deeper into the events of like what occurred between Halloween 1 and 2 and H2O. Michael was well aware that Lori was alive. He was just waiting undoubtedly for either the 20th year anniversary or John turning 17. Why? We don't know. But we don't need to know. That is the whole thing. Give us a little bit. We don't need it all. Not knowing is what makes it a little bit scarier, at least for me. What is it? Carol, what are you doing? My phone's dead. Look, she knows. As soon as she saw that card and had that realization, she knows his ass is back. Ronnie, the phones are out. I know. And there's a strange car parked down at the gate, but I can't seem to find any signs of trespass. There's no reason to get upset yet. Let's just calm down. No, y'all do not need to calm down. Y'all need to panic. I think she knows what she's talking about. She put two fucking bullets in this man's head and he was still up walking around. I think she, uh, we can panic. Where are you, Charlie? We're waiting on you. Charlie, consider Inconsiderate it. Party, party of, of one. one. Your table's, table's ready. ready. Found these, but no corks here. Come on, I'm hungry. Where are you going now? See if there's a corkscrew upstairs. You know, it does beg the question why there's a corkscrew and wine glasses and all of these things at a high school. But, I mean, when Lori's around, there's drinking paraphernalia close by. Trust that. <laughs> Whatever. Here's the question, here's the question. Why the f did he turn that on in the first place? To confirm that it still worked? Like, why? Yeah, we all thought that his hand was about to get demolished. And apparently they're doing another, like, reference to this in Halloween Ends. I saw that in the trailer. Hi, <laughs> the CGI mask. <laughs> now, I love the shot of Charlie in the eye. And yes, I acknowledge that the eye holes on the mask are obnoxiously large and that you can see his eye and all that jazz, but we, we just pretend that you can't see the eyes. Look, and there's the other mask. <laughs> Basically, anytime that there's like a faraway shot, it's the original mask that they shot this movie with, and then up close with the giant eye holes is the new one. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Him looking up, that's a cool shot. But like, what is she stuck on? Like his leg? It's a leg. Just lift his leg. I never understood that. <laughs> Y'all, this is f***ing gnarly. <laughs> the, her f***ing leg is like hanging on by a string. Literally. Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to you, Miss Jody Lynn. You didn't deserve this. I'll be honest though, I, uh, put eye holes aside, I do like the mask. <laughs> Sue me. <laughs> Not too long ago, I saw somebody, I don't remember if it was like videos or if it was pictures, but somebody like went in there and digitally darkened the eye holes and it does look a lot better. What the hell's that? Oh man. Why do they do that? What is so wrong? It's too red. red. <laughs> Yikes. Ooh, that looks so cool. And John is like, I know who that motherfucker is. We need to dip. Look, <laughs> he said, Surprise, bitch. I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. Josh Hartnett gets in a couple good licks, though. <laughs> look at the good look. <laughs> Fuck him up. 
this scene, this is top five scenes of the entire franchise for me. The cool thing about this, there was an interview where Michelle Williams, she was talking about when they were filming this scene and apparently the knife that he's like swinging at them when he sticks his arm through the gate, it was a real knife that he was using and she said it was literally like an inch or two away from their face but she said that during this scene, the tears that you see coming down her face and her look of terror was real because she's like, she, uh, it was something along the lines of all she could see was Michael Myers and she was genuinely terrified and I really feel like you can see that in this scene. <laughs> Yeah, I would have been f***ing terrified too. Ooh, I have like goosebumps. The scene is so terrifying. Yo. Everybody collectively came when we saw that in the theater. What do we do? What do we do? Try, Try to live. live. <laughs> That's all you can do, bitch. Just try not to die. First rule of slaying, don't die. So yes, like he obviously shoots LL Cool J, but when you, when you first see the person walk into frame, that is 100% Michael. I think they A little uh, like the way he's like twitching and you can uh, and you can hear him slicing up Blah, disgusting Bonk. <laughs> if he was normal immediate concussion I love it I love it I love this so much yeah I would have shat the driver's seat right then and there go what? Go! It's coming, it's coming. I want you to drive down the street to the Beckers. Also, Beckers, Casey Becker. Hey, Queen. Kevin Williamson. Hey, Queen. Had his fingers all over this movie. Y'all, y'all. I am about to transcend. <laughs> oh, God. So freaking excited! Look, look, ooh, look. I'm giddy, I am giddy, I am giddy. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. Oh my God, it is so good. Look at the look on her face. She's like, bring your ass out here, you little punk bitch. Oh, ugh, the upper arm strength. <laughs> yeah, your arm is Fun little fact about this whole sequence with him flipping the tables. This was originally a sequence that was supposed to be in Halloween 4, and it was gonna be with, like him chasing Jamie and flipping the tables, and then they ended up reusing it for this film. How did his big ass get up there? And she didn't notice. This is so cool. Although I always laugh at this part because in like the, the TV edit of this movie and then they cut out like certain gore scenes and swears and stuff like that, but you have to like fill a certain runtime. This movie is fairly short. This movie is the sweet spot of shortness, but in the TV edition of this movie, that scene where he's flipping the tables, they just keep looping it. So he just like, there's maybe what, 12 tables in there. And then the TV cut, like he flips like, like 35 tables. It's ridiculous. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Aim towards his body, girl. <laughs> look, look. <laughs> the eyes went wide when the nuts got smashed. My balls! No! When the hunter becomes the prey. You know, she f***s him up. That's right. Now that's how you clear a bitch! She did what needed to be done. Really, Queen? Uh, Lori, Sistrin, I need you to stop dropping the fucking knife. He's, he's, he's dead. He's not. He's fucking LL. I love you, but damn. Because she probably would have popped that knife right into his forehead. Then all of this would have been done and over. Well, maybe. She did put two bullets in his head and that didn't seem to do the trick. 
<laughs> this that's why the next one it, the, the whole f-ing twist is nonsensical they would not have put him in a body bag and not taken the mask off first to confirm who the hell they were putting in a body bag don't move yeah load him in she is a g right now i have one thing to say you better work bitch so i am confused look he was back in there like what the f- where am i <laughs> Damn, he went flying. She knows too. Come on. Come, Come on, on, get, get up. up. When is it gonna end? I'm about to beat this bitch up. Okay, so like, yes, I we've t- already talked about the eye holes being big, but I also think it's like, it is sort of important within the context of this film. He doesn't talk, so they need to be able to look at each other. <laughs> she can't just be looking into a black abyss. You know, she woke up this morning thinking that she was going to teach a class, carve a pumpkin, guzzle some vodka. She was not expecting to f- roll down a cliff. Michael. Michael. So, like, the interpretation of that, like, w- without understanding why they were actually making him do that, but, like, waking up, is, the ma- is my mask still on? Is my mask still on? This little bitch trying to trick her. I remember like watching this and like being in the theater and I'm like, why the f- is she reaching out to him? Is she dumb? Well, don't worry, don't worry. Okay. She's like, you thought, you thought, bitch. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. It's like we were edged for 20 years and then we finally got a release. That's right. All right, y'all, that was Halloween H20 20 years later. I love it. I absolutely love that movie. One of the best entries in the franchise, in my opinion. If you have not seen it, go watch it. I don't know why you're watching this before you've seen the movie. There's, I could go on for hours about how much I love this movie. Lori's journey within this film from start to finish, the way that they portray her character and uh, how the trauma of what happened in 1978 affected her. It's a movie about trauma. It's so real and believable in this film and the catharsis that we get by the end when she finally decides to stop running and turns the table on him and (sighs) so good it's so good (sighs) I'm so happy (laughs) let me know what you guys thought about this movie down in the comments and I will see you for the next one also happy October it's spooky time it's Halloween time every single day of this month you need to keep it spooky oh shut when you think about it